Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, April 26th here, and uh, about 12:30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon or so. And I wasn't gonna make a video, but I decided I'm going to. Today, I want to talk a little bit about fertilizer. Um, this is a rye field, actually the rye field that I was in on my update video when it was raining. When we got cows out on it, you can see the cows, they're all... Sorry for the shakiness, but I'm going like 10 mile an hour, so that's how she is. Um, but anyhow, this field had alfalfa in it. And I talked, was talking to Dad, and I said, Hey Dad, uh, how, much, uh, how much fertilizer do you want to put on this rye? He said, uh, you know, I don't want any fertilizer. It was alfalfa ground. It shouldn't need any fertilizer. And, uh, you know, I, I said, Dad, I, I beg to differ. And he was a little argumentative about the whole situation. And, and uh, he said, well, doesn't alfalfa make its own nitrogen? I said, it does. Um, that's why you don't have to put it on. Alfalfa and soybeans are all very similar. Um, soybeans, they, they make their own, but they use... They use most of it that they use, that they produce, but they do leave a little behind, mainly because the residue breaks down a lot faster than like corn stalks. But anyhow, back to the alfalfa story. So I said, "Well, Dad, we done soil samples on the ground, and I said, how much how much nitrogen do you think think is out here on the on this field?" He said, "Well, it should have plenty. It, it, was, it was alfalfa." I said, why, do, why are we getting rid of this alfalfa field, Dad? I said, what's the, what's the reason? He said, well, there's cheatgrass in it, and it just wasn't producing any, uh, anymore. Well, this is alfalfa field. It's roughly, I don't know, 10 years old or so, 9 or 10 years. Been alfalfa way too long. Um, and uh, anyhow, it had grasses in it. Well, when you're... You're, or he is correct that alfalfa does put nitrogen in the ground. The part that he wasn't thinking about was the grasses that took over the field were actually using the nitrogen that was in the ground that the, that the alfalfa has built up. And alfalfa will only produce nitrogen for so many years and that is why alfalfa fields generally start dying. They're, you know, getting poor is because the plants themselves can no longer uh, produce nitrogen. Um, but it's a little food for thought, I guess, on that. I guess, uh, I guess I don't know if anyone really cares. There's a blank spot there because that's where some bales were stacked. And I drilled it though, so we'll see how it turns out. We're gonna hay this field. Um, like I mentioned before in the past, we're gonna hay it and plant it to cover crop. So the cows have ate the crap out of it. It's probably, couple inches tall down there is all. I have the drill plug up on my drill, that's why that was blank, but anyhow, I, I just, whatever, it is what it is. I have them all the way across the field because I didn't notice it, but uh, anyhow, I guess uh, just a little food for thought. I guess think about putting fertilizer down on your crops. Do soil samples, very important. We don't want to be putting fertilizer out that we don't need. I'm running about 150 pounds on this field of just N because we have built up our phosphorus and other levels that we do not need that so I do not apply it um, except for where we need it and this field uh, this field I guess I don't know if I said it but I had 38 pounds of nitrogen left and uh, a wheat crop which is comparable to rye needs about 200 pounds of nitrogen to uh, be like 50 or 60 bushel wheat I can't remember what the fertilizer guy said there's actually some apps on the on your phones that you can look at um, if you guys want to do that. It's a PhD um, fertilizer removal app, and you can type in whatever crop you got and, and use that information to your own own knowledge. And and it's interesting to see the different crops, how much they use, and, and stuff, and, and what a person should be putting down. So. I'd encourage a person, you know, whether you're a small farmer, a large farmer, mega farmer, whatever, to first off, use a little test. Um, second off, uh, follow them soil tests somewhat. I mean, I understand some people just can't afford to throw the money out there, but I would encourage um, side-by-side -side comparisons on using 
fertilizer compared to non-fertilizer. Um, our corn last year, I done a little test and I split applied some nitrogen. Um, I just put more on. I guess I didn't split apply. I just added more nitrogen and I, I spent about 20 bucks an acre, I think, on it. But it increased my yield uh, 50 bushels. So corn's at three bucks. 50, that's $150 an acre that I returned. And I only spent 20, plus my time doing it. So just say I spent 30. 30 on the applying it, not even be higher than the application done. And, uh, and uh, doing it that way and stuff. And just, just you gotta do your own test. I, I know some people don't want to or whatever, but I believe in fertilizer and I believe fertilizing your crop to get its full potential to pay off. But anyhow, um, I hope you guys don't mind my little um, talk today about fertilizer and and this is I'm going to be one of my update videos on the rye. I don't know how much longer we're going to leave the cows out here, but they've been out here I think about a week, I believe. And they've, like I said, both the crap out of stuff here. Like my little four-legged Larson Valley Farms, he calls them his four-legged forage harvesters. Self-propelled four-legged um, forage harvesters. And I, I believe it, you know, it's what it is. I mean, they're out here, they're harvesting this, and granted, we're going to take them off here. And we're going to harvest it mechanically here too, but um, we didn't have to feed them for this week. I think today or yesterday was, we've been feeding them just a little bit just to keep their bellies full, but they're sure looking good out here. And, it's nice to get the cattle out of the yard and spread out um, for disease reasons and stuff. So there's a huge plus there. I kind of want to keep doing updates on this rye, mainly because when I was thinking about trying it, I couldn't find any people that were out here doing it. I could find like university studies and stuff like that. But I just couldn't find some, some farmer, you know, that done it on his own and recorded it and was willing to share it with the world and here I am I'm going to share it with the world so the next guy that says hey I think I want to try doing some grazing of rye um, they can go ahead and do that and they'll have something to look at and say hey that that farmer in South Dakota he did that and it worked out good so we're, we're going to try it and give it a go but anyhow my video is getting almost be eight minutes long so this is plenty um, all the cattle are looking good we're about done calving. We're on the very downhill slide, uh, which is good. The weather's still cold. It's only like 33 degrees out right now. I wish I would have turned my heater on in my tractor before I started, but I didn't. So it's a little chilly in here, but it is what it is. As I said, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more. And, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.